Hi everyone, thank you for watching today. Today I'm with professional boxer Jordan Withers, who was a multi-time amateur champion, winning five Welsh championships, British championship, and a two-time European quarter finalist. And Jordan is just getting started in his professional career now, having had two uh, fights in the, in the paid ranks, and the future is looking very, very bright. So thank you for um, taking the time to talk with me today, Jordan. Oh dear, my pleasure. Um, so yeah, that's the introduction out the way. So let's let's have a, uh, a chat about your amateur career. I mean, obviously you've accomplished a lot as an amateur. Um, you know, fought in all different countries, won some of the titles I just mentioned. Um, I mean, looking back on that, what would you say your proudest moment is from your amateur career? Um, I'd say winning the British Howard because it took so long to to get in to to win it through the years and. When it was it done? It was just the proudest moment ever, really. And it's in front of my friend, my family, and also when it with my bet, well, my best mate, we said Edwards, we both went together, so it was, it was great. And so I'd say that was my my biggest achievement. Okay, and obviously, you know, during your amateur career, I mean, you you obviously travelled um, quite a bit and, and fought in different places, as far as I know. I mean, what would you say is the best place that, that you sort of um, you've been to for a fight? Because I mean, it must be amazing to you know see some of these different countries. Yeah, um, I, Hungary. I went um, to the European Championships, and um, it was just boiling out there. And it was like on the days off, we went to the water park and everything out there, and it was it was lovely as well. Seeing all other countries train and and just it was awesome competing against other countries. Um, obviously, you know, having a lot of fights as an amateur, I know, uh, I know that you did that. I mean, is there one that sort of sticks out in your mind as like the toughest fight that you had, um, the, like the like the hardest fight? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, I say my last amateur fight was um, when I boxed in um, in the Stranger tournament. It's my first senior fight after I had an injury, so I did about a, a year out. I didn't box, and it was my first senior fight. And I came up against um, world number five, and um, I was hitting him with shots, and he just weren't budging at all. <laughs> so I, I had no experience as a as a senior, and he, he caught me with a body shot, got up, and he caught me one again, and hit the window me did. <laughs> but obviously, if I had more experience and, and took took my time, eased my way into the sen to the seniors, uh, it would have been different. Like, but. They just went about that the wrong way. So, yeah. So, I mean, you, you touched on something there, Jordan. I mean, you, you know, you touched on the injury that you had. And I, and I know that, you know, that was quite like a serious thing. That was quite a bad accident. Yeah. I mean, what actually, what, you know, what actually happened there, all in all? Um, well, I went out for my morning run. And um, my mother's following me, as, as she always does in the morning. And um, it was about halfway point. It was by a bridge and... I went to put, push myself up on it and sit sit down. I pushed myself up too far and, it, and fell backwards off it. And um, fell about 20 foot of it, off it. Straight on to half of it was water and half of it was on the on brick. So I, I broke my pelvis on. A serious injury. Like. Yeah. <laughs> so my time to get back into it. Yeah, and what was your recovery like from that? I mean, how long did it take you to? I mean, I've read that it was ten months, but I mean, what what was your recovery process? Uh, well, this should have been longer, but about two months later, I was back training really because it took me just to get get up my feet to walk tidy again because it took me I had to have um, a, like a physio thing to learn how to walk again really because I couldn't even walk after it. So it took me a bit to run and everything, but I was just standing still on the bag, just kept punching, just building up slowly. But um, it should have been longer than what it was, but I rushed it a bit. Well, yeah, you wanted to get back in there, I reckon. But yeah, exactly. during, during that time, though, I mean, did you, I mean, mentally, like, you know, what were you going through? Because, I mean, were you sort of ever doubting that you'd get back in, in the ring, or did you always believe that, like, you'd come out uh, there? I knew I was going to get back in there. I never thought, oh, this is me done, like, but um, obviously I knew that, oh, this is going to hurt, like, because even if the slightest little niggle on it, it was, it was, it's, it was serious pain, it was hurting me. But um, 
I was, I was, was a doubt in my mind thinking, is it ever going to go? I thought, oh, is it, this is something I'm always going to have. I'm just going to have to push through it. But um, I still have it now. Like sometimes if I stand on it too awkwardly, it'll, it'll hurt a tiny bit. But I think it's just something that I have to get on with now. Like, <laughs> Uh, well, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's brave getting back in there, Jordan. I know that much. I mean, you know, something serious like that. So let's let's sort of skip on a little bit um, to obviously turning professional and everything like that. Um, I mean, obviously, I think it's a good thing you turned professional quite young uh, and you've oh, sort of given, given yourself a head start there. Um, I mean, there's, you know, there's mixed opinions about that. Personally, I'd say it's a good thing, but everyone's got their view. But, um, I mean, what sort of inspired you to um, make the decision to, to turn professional now? I mean, what... Um, it was kind of like, because my last going out, I was on um, the 2022 Commonwealth Games squad. I was living down in Cardiff. But um, last going off, they, like, they took me to that tournament and it was the wrong decision to take me anyway. And they just kind of put me on a downward spiral from it. I thought, there's no point being here anymore. And it's, um, prior to that, Reese turned pro, and I was seeing how well he was doing. And, um, and then I just thought, oh, after that, I thought, why not? Like, so I just made the decision to turn pro with Tony Bog. It was the best decision I've ever made. So, loving life now. <laughs> Brilliant. And yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, let's get into that a little bit, because I mean, obviously, you're training in St. Joseph's, um, you know, and you train amongst champions. Um, you know, obviously Lisa will be their world champion, obviously, obviously Gavin Gwynn uh, and, and a lot of other people. I mean, what's it like sort of training in that environment? I mean, obviously I know that because I obviously take photos there, but I mean, for the people watching this now, I mean, what, what's, it, what's it like to be training with such great well, it, it doesn't get much better than that, really, does it? To be training with a former world champion and Gavin, Gavin Gwynn, who's, who's fit as hell, and you've got people to push you, and you can listen to their stories and everything. And it, it's just awesome because you, when you're tired, they could be like, oh, come on, push on, no push. And it's, it's good to have them to look, look at and think in a few years, I want to be like that. So it's, it's great motivation for you, really. If you, if you can't get motivated to train them really, it's, you're not going to get motivated ever, really. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to look at it, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, looking at, like, obviously, the two fights you've had so far, they've both been, you know, good, solid um, points wins and obviously obviously losing records guys but you're just getting getting going and that's that's yeah. good, good experience but I mean how have you how do you feel you've adapted um, like to the pros because obviously it is it is a bit different to the amateurs obviously um, how do you feel you've... Um, like my fir first fight everyone was saying how, how mental it was and how composed and everything it was for someone who was 19 like normally you'd think oh I want to impress the fans again and start trying to look silly but I was just more relaxed than I've ever been to be honest and like obviously my first fight he just ran for most of it so it was hard to pin him down but the second fight he come he come to fight really so it, it, it seemed to me and I could show a bit of my skills off then and I, was, I caught him a good shot and put him down then and it's good good learning experience for me and like I never I haven't lost a round yet so <laughs> so I just keep that going now yeah, keep it going on the right track, yeah. And let's talk about sparring. I mean, you're talking about showing off, uh, showing off your skills and stuff like that. And I remember, obviously, I've, I've seen you spar with Lee and everything like that. I mean, looking back over, over your career, it's amateur or professional now. I mean, what, what's some of the, like, the better, like, the best sparring that you've had? Is there anything that comes to mind for that? Yes, I had, I had a, I sparred um, a world champion Kazakhstan boy out in America when I went out there with uh, Lee. I sparred him in the wild card about four, four or six rounds I've done with him and he was like cat the mouth for the old sparring because he's a southpaw big boy every time I moved to his to his left he, he tried to loop a shot at me I was just had to stand off and pick pick him off and it, I come out to that sparring and Fred you ought to I was also sparring I was and it's like you don't get my spent sparring and sparring top boys and everything like that but um, throughout most of the sparring everyone said you're like a world champion in sparring like, like showing off my skills and everything. It's it's different to fighting, isn't it? So, yeah. so if you can if you can take your skills from sparring into your fights, you this you'd be I'd be top top form, Mike. Yeah. 
And obviously that that's a good point because that's something I was going to ask you actually. Is, is you know, I mean, the session in LA when you went over there, you were over how long? Like two weeks, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, two weeks over there. And you met Freddie Roach, and you you know, had some amazing experiences there. I mean, what was it? What was the whole experience like? Um, Literally a dream come true for me. Since a, since a young kid, I've always said I wanted to go to America and to have that opportunity and to be able to train out there with the likes of Lee Selby and and the boys and be around all champions, be around top, the best coach in the world, Fred Roach, and actually stand there and speak to him and tell and he's telling me what to do is is amazing. And I just I had to thank my management team for that, Sanger Vence for for giving me the opportunity to do that really. The thing here that I mean, you know, some people watching this will know the answer to this and some won't, so you know, we'll, we'll throw it out there. But obviously, you've been called the Welsh Canelo after Canelo Alvarez, and that's <laughs> sort of, that sort of stuck now. I mean, in the beginning, where did that name actually actually come from, and where did that start? Well, Tony said it really. They kept, kept calling me Canelo. Well, it's, uh, and then they like, kind of stuck there once I went out to America, and I walked into uh, the Maywood gym. It was a Mexican gym in uh, LA, and it was, it was just a random guy I've never seen before, never met him. And he's screaming across from the gym. He's going, Canelo. Canelo and I turned around and he <laughs> and he just stuck in because he, he kept coming he said I can't wait to see you for that. and he, just, he kept saying Canelo ladies and gentlemen all the time so he's just stuck now there's oh, one nice. name one name to be named after isn't it? <laughs> yeah amazing that's, uh, that's a good sign that is and then let's touch on, um, I mean, obviously some of your, some of your like future plans, because um, I know, I mean, obviously the future's bright. I mean, in, in a lot of ways, you know, you're just getting started. Um, I mean, where do you, where do you sort of see yourself going with your boxing career over like the next, next few years? Hopefully, well, the plan was to get a few more fights and then um, get a Welsh title and fight um, anyone who got it, because I believe my, my skill set and everything. Will, will be enough to to be to get me a, um, a title and um, hopefully keep pushing on and get um Celtic Celtic title or something and then hopefully a British title and then obviously work my way up and then dream, the dream is to get um, a world title. I ain't stopping until I have a world title really. So <laughs> brilliant, yes, yeah, so that's the goal. Fantastic. Okay, and then let's let's talk about a couple of sort of just general interest um, questions now. Because one of the things I well, I meant to ask earlier, but I forgot actually. But what would you say your your best attribute is as a boxer? Like your like the area in which you're most skilled? Um, my feet work probably. If like for a middleweight, the respect them would be slow and but I got I got quick feet and I got and quick and quick arm quick quick arms really. So that's yeah. I'd say that's my best attributes yeah I've, I've noticed that as well actually um when i've seen you fight and and when i've seen you spar actually i've, I've noticed mm. those two things a lot and i remember actually um well, it was a little bit off topic but when i first saw you sparring with selby i was i was like quite surprised at the hand speed because like you you know yeah. you were fast so brilliant and the other thing is what about like jordan what about your your mental game because i mean we, we've talked about like the physical training a bit but like how do you sort of mentally prepared for fights or I mean when you're coming up on a fight what's sort of like going through your mind basically um I try not to think about it too much like but um it's kind of I'm preparing myself to just to look good really in front of everyone like I'm, I know I, I, I never think of I I won't fight to to not lose I'd always fight to win like I never think oh imagine losing in front of everyone it's always kind of prepare myself in the best way, get my, my fitness right and everything. And I know when, when my legs are fit and strong, my I box I, my boxing ability becomes better then because I'm able to move around as much then. Because if I stand there and, and fight, I ain't, I ain't uh, as good as a boxer as what I can be like, so. I mean, on, on the run-up to, to fight, <laughs> do you ever feel like any nerves? Do you ever feel like any pressure or anything like that? Or, or are you just sort of... Um... Or does that not um, come? I thought I would be, see, but like I used to get nervous as a kid. But then I, obviously I've boxed top class opponents as an, as an amateur. This fighting boys I guess now at, at like as I am now, obviously the, the opponents will 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 be better. But at the moment, 
that I don't really get nervous, to be honest. I just go out there to put on a show. Like, mm. That's good. Well, that's a good way to look at it. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's a healthy mindset, I would say. Mm. And this one, this one's a, a sort of um, a, a strange question in, on the one hand, because I know you're just getting started. But, like, looking back on your amateur career, I mean, is there anything... That you that you would change, like, is anything you do differently, or are you just are you just sort of happy? Oh with? yeah, definitely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't join the the Welsh squad probably. Like, I wouldn't li- waste time living down on the elite squad because it's just it's just a waste of time really. Because we lived down there on peanuts for money, and we just we didn't go nowhere really. We just like after we won the British, there was a European um, World Championships and and a um, um, Olympic Games that was supposed to be for the youth, and we didn't go to any of them. So, and it and it's just wrong, really, because all them down there are on eight, 80, 90 grand a year, whereas we are on two hundred fifty pound a month. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a sad state of affairs, isn't it? I know. Uh, I know. I know. Um, that's something you mentioned, like you mentioned before, uh, and I just wanted to touch on it because it's you know get that out there. So. Okay, and there's only only a couple more, Jordan. I mean, the one thing I wanted to ask you um, again is, I mean, we talked a bit earlier about some of the training in St. Joe's and how that's going, but I mean, what part of training do you actually like best? Because obviously, it takes obviously a lot of dedication to do, you know, what you yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, probably sparring and and the and the pad work really. I was, I say the the bit I hate is the fitness. I say because all them are flying, and then there's me and just at the start, uh, dying in front of everyone. So I'd say that's my my worst part and my best part about training. Okay. And then um obviously I mean you stayed motivated all this time and obviously you um I mean putting it I'm thinking how to put this over basically, but obviously with boxing there's there's like a lot of sacrifices, you know. Um yeah. and obviously that's that's something and obviously, you know, as a sort of our sort of age, it, there's always sort of um, you know these different temptations, these different things. I mean, how do you sort of stay like on track with with your training and, and not sort of get pulled into like drinking or this, that, and the other? How do you sort of stay so motivated? Um, it's like I, I have my father and my family to keep me motivated, really. But obviously, sometimes you get tempted with things now with all your friends and everything's going out and see all their their life. But it, you kind of think that. Oh, this it's good now. Like everything seems good to them now, but in a few years, you'll be the one laughing at because you you have all the money, the titles, the girls, everything. So that's that's really what I kind of look at now. So mm. that's good. You think a bit long term, like yeah. I understand, yeah. And uh, there's only only a couple more things. I mean, the one thing I would like to ask you is obviously you're you're very very respected, like in your community. I mean, uh, obviously like in your sort of local area, um, uh, you know, everyone says, you know, Jordan, he's going to be the next big thing and stuff. <laughs> I mean, what, like, impact, sort of impact do you think you've had on, like, on your community? Because I, I think it's probably at the stage now where a lot of, like, young um, fighters are, are obviously starting to look up to you and things like that and, and stuff. But what sort, yeah. of in, what sort of impact would you say you've had on, like, your local area? Um, I think about a good impact, really, because it's like... You see all the young fighters coming through. Like I go to my my old amateur gym, and you see them all. Cause they see oh, Jones training, and then they, and they kind of motivate them because I take some of them on the pads. I take um, my coaches by um, through sparring and everything. This gives him a boost then because he train like the, he kind of looks up to you and you, like you you don't realize it, but you kind of a role model to people then around you because it's like a small community. There's only really a small group of people that come through it. There's Liam Williams for one, there's Alex Hughes, but obviously I think now Rhys Edwards for one, and then there's me. And so it's four of us to come out of it. And it's, it's either the Rondas, either make some yourself or you don't. So they, people kind of look up to you in that way. So it's good, really. <laughs> Is that one of your main motivations then? Because, I mean, would you say that's like your main motivation? Or, I mean, what I'm asking actually is, I mean, obviously to stay as dedicated as you are and everything, what what, what would you say is your main motivation for boxing? Um, I'd say just to prove people wrong, to be honest, because this, you get as much people respect you, you get some people who's jealous of you and 
just want to see you fail, really. And I'd say, I just want to just stick a middle finger up and, and say, yeah, I done it. Like there you go. But to so I say, just want to prove people wrong. Just show them that I'm, where I am worth investing in, and just just that, really. <laughs> That's fair. And the last one, I um, mean, the last thing really that, that I would like to talk about is obviously, um, if you had to give like advice to to young fighters now, like like literally, you know, just starting out, like just just coming into the sport or whatever, um, if you had to give them some advice, like what what would you say to them? Um, I'd say just keep training, just keep keep fit. It's it's not a training that you do in the gym. It's everything you do out there, really. The training that you do on yourself. That's what makes a champion, and just keep keep training and keep keep just keep being new. Really, don't don't try and be anything other than that. I say. <laughs> good advice. Good advice. So I mean, Jordan. I mean, um, that's to be honest, mate. That's everything. I mean, that's that's a really good little sort of insight into your career, into your mindset, into different things. Before we, you know, before we wrap it up, though, I mean, is there like anything you'd like to say specifically to anyone watching this, or, or are you all good? Um, nothing really. I'm, I'm all good. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Just sometimes people have something, so it's, it's always yeah. worth asking. But no, mate. I mean, that's honestly that's fantastic. Um, I appreciate okay. you taking the time to have a chat with me. Actually, um, yeah, that's right. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel and there will be more videos coming soon.